Welcome back to Growing Up with Godzilla, my friends. My name is Donnie Winter, and this is my show where I have conversations with Godzilla fans about how they've grown with the characters and the franchise over the years. This episode is a continuation of the phenomenal conversation I began with the iconic and legendary Monster Island Buddies in the last episode, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of our conversation. What would be, like, your shameless go-to comfort Godzilla movie? That you can watch anytime, all the time. Surprise question. <laughs> yeah, it is a surprise question. I mean, th- I find the whole Showa era so comforting in particular. Because uh, so much of it is like just light, you know, and it's good. It's good company is a good word for it. I, I, I want to say destroy all monsters, but like, I don't feel like that's a, sh- a movie you should be. Like, it's not a hot take to say that's a good movie. I think a lot of people like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's a hot uh, uh, versus that just broke me. <laughs> uh versus Mechagodzilla, the the first one Ooh, is a real yes. good uh is a real good comfort one. You know what? Okay, I, I know. It, it'd probably be like versus Guy Gan, because that's that one dips its toes in schlock a lot more. Uh corn cob dude. Yeah. <laughs> One of the best characters ever. I don't even think that character has a name. If memory serves me correctly. But I phenomenal movie. Yeah. I would, for me, this is going to be an unexpected answer for a lot of people, but I would say that Godzilla vs. Megaguirus is my current comfort Godzilla film. I oh. used to like... I used to like not like the film, but then I yeah. watched it and I was just like, there's so much personality in the kaiju in this film. Like It's very Showa-esque to me. And yeah. that's when it became more comforting. That one's got like one of my favorite Godzilla finishing moves <laughs> or like final shot, you know, because a lot of them have really, especially in a millennium era, a lot of them have really good finishing moves or final yeah. shots in the fight. And that one, I remember like the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I I love the scene where he like, jumps and like body slams Megaguirus in like the most dramatic yeah. way. I, I was just like, this is this is the show a camp that I've been waiting for. You know what? I'm really due for like an, a rewatch of that one. It has been a very long time since I watched that one. And I have no issue with it. There's just, you know, there's so many Godzilla movies. Some of them are going to fall in the background. You know, right. and some you're going to see more often. That one well, I need to rewatch. You know, and I think it's really cool because, and this is kind of segueing but um i love the fact that we are again in kind of like a, a new godzilla renaissance like we're getting much more godzilla content and there's more on the horizon that we can look forward to um we've had like toho experimenting with like the anime trilogy and singular point uh mm-hmm. shin godzilla the monster verse like people want more godzilla and i think that that's so refreshing like what is yeah like, what what is your favorite like newer contemporary godzilla media i've liked it all i really do like shin godzilla um i think kind of like building off of what you just said though i really like how toho is kind of challenging what our perception of godzilla is lately with these new interpretations While at the same time in other places, like, you know, like the ride or whatever, like keeping the old interpretation, but refreshed. And I like that. I like that Godzilla could be anything. That's like why I'm kind of why I'm drawn to him as a fictional character. Because you like Batman is always his parents got shot in an alley and he went into a cave and became Batman. But Godzilla could be anything, (laughs) like anything in the world. He could be a... He could be a good guy. He could be a bad guy. He could be a space alien, which he was in a space Godzilla, that, that short story. Um, yeah. And it just, it could work. He's such a malleable fictional character. And I'm glad that after all these decades, he, like Toho's starting to kind of appreciate that and kind of pushing the envelope. And, and, and I'll admit, like when I sometimes see like Godzilla Ultima for the first time, I'll be like, ew, no. But but because because it's because it's it's human nature to be resistant to like radically new ideas. But almost always, I almost always warm up to it. I warm up to the the new Mecha Godzilla in Godzilla versus Kong, or I warm up to you know 
Shin Godzilla in his early forms, like, and the, the appreciation kind of grows. And, like, that's just something I really think is special about right now in Godzilla history, is it's branching into all these new creative directions. And if anything, I just wish they would let more people get in on that and more people try out, hint, hint me, try, <laughs> try out some things and play, play in their sandbox, you know? <laughs> You know, it's interesting that you're mentioning, uh, well, first, I agree 100%. I keep always wondering to myself, like, where would we be now had Shin Godzilla not been the success that it was? Mm. Um, because, like, I would I would personally argue that Shin Godzilla being the rather unexpected success that it was has definitely catapulted Godzilla you know more so into like the pop cultural scope or periphery right um yeah. and i think the monster verse probably has a lot to do with it too but i think that at least toho is probably gauging like okay we'll see how shin godzilla does if shin godzilla doesn't do well we won't do anything else like i just got that vibe what are your thoughts yeah. on that i uh i would agree you know i really Shin Godzilla proved that they were willing to try something not only serious, but like artful in a way. And um, I really do think it kind of kicked off. So, and, and like you said, in with the MonsterVerse running parallel and being more of the traditional big budget, you know, slugfest. Um, like I keep saying, like there's something for everyone, especially now. And I think that's why it's growing. I hope it's growing. The one thing I wish they would do is something like, this is going to sound stupid, but like, I wish they would make a cartoon or something for the little kids. <laughs> right. <'cause laughs> because, like, yeah. Like, the Hanna get new, like a new, yeah. yeah. Like a new Godzilla show or just something to get the young kids in. Because right now the young kids are only really coming in via their parents mm. and like not kind of discovering it on their own. And I really feel like, you know, I hate to say hook them when they're young, but I really feel like if they had a good, like, <laughs> a good show for toddlers, <laughs> right, to familiarize them with the IP, I feel like that's the real big missing puzzle piece right now. <laughs> no, really, I don't think, I mean, I, I know, like, Tahoe's done some, like, small-scale things in the past for, like, kids, but, like, not yeah. since, like, the like, 90s or something, if yeah. memory serves me correctly. And I'm talking about in America. I'm not even talking about, like, Chibi Godzilla going on in Japan. Like, I'm talking, like, right. we need an American or, like, a translated American. Just bring back Godzilla. I just, this is all me just trying to say I want Godzilla to come back. I love Godzilla. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Me, too. Like, I, and I think they've been posting those on YouTube. Um and I've been like, just, I've been periodically going back and being like, this was amazing. This is so camp. I love it. I'm here for it. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Now. Yeah. Focusing back on the Godzilla films. Are there, okay. like, I guess, are there any particular kaiju or human characters that you're drawn to? And if so, why? What draws you to those kaiju or human characters? Hmm. I'm going to give you a really unexpected answer. Ooh, I'm here for that. Okay. <laughs> like an incredibly unexpected answer. Um, I'm really drawn to the TriStar Zilla Godzilla. And Ooh. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, that's a crazy one. And that's because Ooh. it's for a few reasons. One, that I, I you know, I, I got to witness his rise and fall in culture as it happened. <laughs> and um yeah. and because he's got really good merch because they went all in on this thinking it was gonna be a smash hit but uh, as a character if you trace his entire line like we're talking about a godzilla that's you know destroying new york city has a bunch of kids watches all the almost all his kids die and then he nearly dies and then gets abducted by aliens and turned into a cyborg who's missing an arm, forced to fight his own son who defeats it. Like, it's just a tragic story. <laughs> it's just oh, really yeah. sad. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, you know, that series, though, that came from that film, uh -huh. Chef's Kiss, phenomenal yeah. theories. Yeah, I definitely love that series. Um, 
I thought the plots, like, I, I didn't watch it at the time when it was new. I watched it much later. And I was like, wow, these plots are actually, like, well thought out sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Like a little Doctor who in sometimes. Yeah, kind of. I just really liked that, yeah. No, like, I just, that was such an interesting selection because, like, there are still so many Godzilla fans who hate on that film. Now, don't get me wrong, like, it by all means is not my favorite film necessarily, but... Oh, me neither. It's still so fun to watch. Like, the <laughs> characters are hilarious. The story is yeah. pretty good. If, if you want to see anything that embodies all things 90s, that film... Oh, great definitely. Picture. I mean, that film is the late, like, every late 1990s film looked like that film. Like, at that point, Hollywood had this hubris that they knew how to make a hit film because they had such good success in the early 90s with stuff like Independence Day. And then they just, they were shitting out this and Batman and Robin and just all these duds oh, <laughs> that looked the, the same. Yeah. Yep. And, like, yeah, and I agree. I, I feel like... um you know, people, especially older fans, that like really hold on to that hate. You know, if if, if it brings them together, if bringing them together, hating on the movie, you know, is what brings them together. I guess that's fine, but you can't deny the immense astronomical cultural impact that movie had on Godzilla's history. Right, right. Well, because it it brought Godzilla, I think, more so into the American pop cultural limelight than ever before, mm -hmm. right? And truthfully, without that film, would we have gotten the Millennium Era? Because, like, right. Toho, I mean, arguably that film was pretty successful for that time. And, um, like, and who and, are and its, right. And who are its, its, its biggest offenders are probably viewers that were children when they saw it kind of going back to like the hook when they're young thing and if that's what it did if it just brought in more fans you know I, i'm not gonna be mad at it i can forgive it even though at the time i hated it with a passion i was just, i don't say i hated it. it was just such a disappointment <laughs> see like it, it's funny because when i was like i was nearing teenage years at that point and i hated it at, actually i think it was in middle school i like yeah. hated it but loved it at the same time like i I remember i had a godzilla lunchbox i had like uh, tennis shoe like i had like all the merch like i was just like you know what i'm gonna go all in like yeah like that <laughs> doesn't look like godzilla but i'll be damned if i'm not gonna have that lunchbox that's super cute or those shoes yeah. that are very fashionable it was really nice to have godzilla like so mainstream like he'll never be that mainstream again oh. in america so that was right. cool <laughs> yeah i agree 100 percent. i i so i don't know like if you got any of like the figures connected to that film but i remember one like i think it was like the, that christmas my parents got me and my brother that giant like rubbery electronic Godzilla figure mm -hmm. that like I, I think you would just like was it you push a button or like you had to click something and it would like roar it was amazing oh, yeah. it was amazing and yeah. I broke it because I'm a horrible person that would have been worth a fortune right now oh yeah I don't I know. know how much that one's worth um yeah I didn't have any of the toys at the time I, I kind of got them all after the fact I, I, I tried duct taping them together and they lasted a little <laughs> while longer. Like I always tell people, like I remember that, I don't know if you've ever gotten the trend master sets, but like, you know how they had like the electronic Mothra and Mechagodora. I yeah. played with that Mothra so much that her wings broke off oh. and I had to duct tape, I had to duct tape them on and it looked really, it looked really bad. <laughs> Like, Mothra, Mothra looked rough. She oh, looked really that's, rough. That's a really adorable story. Uh, but you know what? She 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 hanged in there for a while. So how about human characters? Like, are there any humans that you're, like, really drawn to in um, films? Okay. So... I, I like the MonsterVerse a lot. I, I appreciate what it is, and I've made peace with the fact that each film is sillier than the previous one, but there was a time for five minutes where it was, like, really 
serious and dark and that was like the first five minutes of godzilla 2014 and oh. yeah and that whole little vignette with with uh with uh brody's dad i forget his first name with brian cranston mm-hmm. that little vignette was so impactful and so like it was like just good filmmaking oh like, yeah I, I remember crying yeah yeah i remember thinking oh this is gonna be a freaking great movie <laughs> Oh and unfortunately it never kind of met that moment again but because of that like i i would say the character brian cranston played is the first thing that pops in my head because like i said there's that little vignette as a standalone short film in the godzilla universe it's just five stars fantastic yeah i could not agree more one thousand percent i just like i i i kind of frustrate people sometimes because i'll be like that's my least favorite film in the monster first oh, <laughs> like, there, <laughs> there are moments in it that i absolutely love but the characters mm. are so boring like yeah like it really the... takes a dump as it goes and then oh. it kind of redeems in the end it, get, it has some yeah. really good moments in the third act but now mind you i love like elizabeth olsen icon love her mm. so much and i think that they kind of sabotaged her character a little bit like she just became like the reactionary like oh oh, oh no like we're yeah. underground they sabotaged a lot of characters i feel like yeah i'm just like it, yeah but you know, like I think that it did. Obviously, it did what it needed to do. It it cemented Godzilla again mm-hmm. in American pop cultural scopes, right? And then it led to the MonsterVerse, and here we have another MonsterVerse movie on the horizon. So, yeah, for sure. I, I still think the best one. Um, I still like Kong Skull Island the best of the MonsterVerse films, mm. which I feel like is sacrilege to say because I'm oh, such no, a Godzilla fan. All. But I just think, like, in terms of, like, a well-made movie, that one Yeah, comes critically closest. speaking, yeah, critically yeah. speaking, the best. Yeah. Uh, my shameless favorite is Godzilla King of the Monsters. Can anybody oh, yeah, guess cause... why? Why could that Cause, be? Because uh, <laughs> I'm Masada? Because oh, my queen, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but I also could rant about that movie, because I feel like Rodan and Mothra were sabotaged a little bit, too. But you know yeah. what? I am grateful that we got what we got. <laughs> I'm not going to be too bitter. <laughs> right. <laughs> Even though it's one of my favorite pastimes, but you know, hey. It's just like, it's so frustrating because like every Godzilla MonsterVerse movie is like, it's it's good. It's good enough. It's fun to watch, but like two drafts away from a maze. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if they just oh. gave every script two more looks. <laughs> They would yep. really tighten up a lot of it and and make it come together like like a good film. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I I could literally not agree more with that. Honestly, <laughs> oh, they're goodness. just so, they're just like good, but they're kind of frustrating a little bit. But they're good. <laughs> well, and I think we've kind of resigned ourselves to knowing that not every film is going to be perfect. Like, I think as Godzilla fans, we have, like, this image in our mind of, like, the perfect Godzilla film, but will we ever get there? I don't know. Probably not. And nobody (laughs) believes me when I say that I think Godzilla Tokyo SOS is the perfect Godzilla film, but, you know, they're okay having their flawed opinion by disagreeing with me. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) I had somebody try to argue to me that Godzilla Final Wars was the perfect Godzilla film, and I was just like... Well, I mean, like I keep saying, there's one for everyone, and that I, is I, it. I, I, <laughs> they, like, they were like, though, they were like critically speaking, though, like, uh, like, and I was just like, well, okay, you know, I'm glad that that film fulfills what you need. I love it because I think it's entertaining, but critically right. speaking... <laughs> yeah. But, so I, I do have a kind of interesting side question for you. Is okay. there a Godzilla film or other form of media that you notice everybody loves, but you're just kind of like, eh, meh, oh. just out of curiosity? Because I have one too, and I'll share in a minute. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I noticed when I did the Super Nintendo Super Godzilla video game review that I got a lot of pushback in the comments from people who had had nostalgia for it, so they didn't think it was as bad as I was on it. Um, 
Hmm. <laughs> that's fair. That's what fair. Is, yeah. No, I'm trying to think. Like, what is everybody like really into that I'm like meh? Um. Oh. I'm like looking around my the office. Like, I'll find something that'll inspire a good answer. Do you want me to go first and maybe? Yeah, you go first. So, go ahead. Because I like my. I found a way to. I think I found a way to explain mine. So for me. And and don't hate me, please don't hate me. It was Godzilla uh, versus Megalon at first. <laughs> but oh, that's, that's I've, a terrible movie. I'm not gonna hate you. <laughs> I've made my peace, and I actually enjoy that film now. But for a long time, I could not understand why so many people loved that film. Like I was just oh, like, it's because it was everywhere. Like people like me, that was like the most inescapable one. Right, and I think that's probably from like I was so burnt out on it because I probably wore out like three VHSs of that film. Uh, and and I, I think it was just self, self, what is the word I'm thinking of? Imposed, self-imposed. Yeah. Right yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm not going to hate on that answer. I mean, that movie, especially like the English dub, is just, oh, it's, it's like large chunks of it are just unwatchable. <laughs> it's so true i think there's like five frames of the whole movie that have a female in it <laughs> oh right it's just right not like yeah um no people get really annoyed with me because because i can be an annoying person from time to time <laughs> surprise uh, everyone right <laughs> no but like i always i'm like you know what you can't convince me otherwise but i just i feel like the two main male characters, like, I don't, they're not related, right? Like, they're just friends. I'm, like, they're in an LGBTQ plus relationship raising this child, and they're just finding their way into the world. Like, I just, like, I like in my brain, <laughs> yeah, like, that's my head headcanon. I'm just, like, you know, yeah. like, look at how fashionable they are. Like, look at, <laughs> yeah. yeah. One's a nerd. Yeah, I think so. I, I think my answer would be it's not something like I think is bad. It's just something I'm not into. Um, you know, I have a lot of soft vinyls, and like ninety percent of them are for the show. They're my actors, mm -hmm. but I do have like some in the display case that are more collectible and nicer. But there are a lot of collectors that that's like really all their focus is. It's just mm. these really well-made soft vinyls, um, both both old vintage stuff and new stuff that keeps coming out and come being imported from Japan. And there's just like like when I talk to Godzilla collectors, I feel like a lot of the times that's what collecting means to them. Like just this this one this one area of 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 the whole culture, and it's like these soft vinyls and i can respect that and i can like appreciate a good soft vinyl but like where's the other person that like me that's like oh i have this like terrible godzilla rubik's cube that was made in 1994 <laughs> the stickers are peeling off and that's like that's what's special to me you know like <laughs> yeah it's, so, yeah yeah so i, I guess that would be my the answer niche, the, ni the niche memorabilia like i think that people tend to be a little bit more they, they kind of gloss over it, right? So, yeah, like, because, uh, yeah, because I think collecting is such a bigger scope, yeah, than just these, these beautiful, admittedly, like, a, a no hate, like, soft finals are awesome, but I just think it's like such a small percent of what's out there. And I yeah. feel like it's hard to find collectors who are more focused with what's out there, at least in my circles, in my experience, yeah. I've like I've been there too. Like I've I've witnessed that as well. So, ooh, here's a more personal question. Okay. Yeah, and not a surprise one. Um, oh, Barbara Walters on me now. <laughs> what? If only what? I could pull off that level of hairspray. <laughs> um, how has Godzilla shaped you into the person you are today? Oh man, how do you answer that? Because like. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Like you ask straightforward questions and I make them complicated, but like, yeah. But like, do you mean like, like absorbing like, Godzilla culture or make doing my channel or being involved with the community? Cause those are all different answers. Right. I would say all of the above. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what? Um, okay. I would say that before this channel 
and immersing myself in the community. Because remember, like the first few years of the channel, I was like very, very sheltered and not like I wasn't responding to the comments. I wasn't like a public voice in any way, shape or form. I was on no socials. Um, so then I kind of pushed myself because I'm introverted like that, but I kind of pushed myself out there. And I think it was like the most experience I've had in any aspect of my life of meeting different people of all walks of life in different different parts of the world or even parts of America. Mm. Um, and through Godzilla and this community, like it was the first time I was actually talking to people in um, I don't want to single any kind of thing out, but it's like the first time I'm talking to people that just grew up different than I did or have different experiences than I have, yeah. or like you said before about the LGBT community, or just are people with different mental like battles like I have, or people with mm-hmm. diff- just different walks of life. And like before this whole thing, I was only getting that in drips and drabs, but this was like diving into a pool mm. of under- like listening and understanding other people. And so that was kind of like, that kind of shaped me in that, like, you know what? It's not all from my point of view. Like the, the world, like my perception of the world is not somebody else's. And that's like just the reality. And I have to, I have to understand that with every interaction I go into and like try to carry that as best I can. Like when I, when I, when I debate, when I, uh, when I meet people for the first time or just have conversation and I just got to like. I would say that's like, that's what it is. Just exposure to so many different walks of life that I would not have gotten otherwise. Wow. That's really powerful. Um, and something too, that I can connect with. I, like, I, I guess one thing that a lot of, and I, and this has been the case with many of the people I've spoken with here on the show is that one thing that I think a lot of Godzilla fans universally universally shares that we've all felt like very isolated or othered in some way yeah and like being able to connect with the rest of the fandom like has helped us heal those aspects of ourselves in many ways now mind you this could be the case for like you know any fandom probably right but i feel Mm -hmm. like for a lot of kids especially like we didn't have a lot of friends in our periphery who also loved Godzilla the way we do right yeah and part of our journey was probably making peace with that for a long time but now that we're able to like reach out and connect with people and see just how like diverse our fandom is and how each of us have been uniquely impacted by the character and franchise like that is really empowering in of itself right so yeah like i think you answered that perfectly like nice uh, i did it (laughs) (laughs) Woo! that was the barbara walters question of the day nice yeah i mean and there's no better example of that than when you go to g-fest and you just look around and you know there's like some of the organizers of it have made their political ideology very well known but then you look around and it's like there are people that absolutely oppose that, but we're all here for the common purpose and that's overpowering it. And everybody is able to enjoy themselves because of that. And you don't see that a lot in this, in this world today where everything is just, just, I'm going to die on this hill. (laughs) You don't see people coming together that way much anymore. (laughs) Yeah. There's room for everybody. I want to know, Okay, so, I mean, you've kind of talked about this already, but when it comes to collecting, like, what, like, how far does your love of collecting go? It's definitely, it's definitely simmered down because it's just a question of how much space I have. (laughs) And I've used every inch of space I currently have. Um, But, like, what I'm interested in is stuff that kind of, like I said, kind of, displays the culture of Godzilla over the years. Um, I'm really into I'm, I've been really into Zone Fighter collectibles just because like mm-hmm. that's such a little 
such a little niche market that I don't know anyone mm-hmm. else except for except for my friend except for Daikaiju Legends that's really into. Um, I loved collecting the Godzilla and stuff. I like getting like silly little knickknacks, especially from Japan in the nineties. Um, I like. I have a career. My career is in advertising, so I like ads, like print ads and stuff. Over the years, I have a whole binder filled with those. Ah, oh, that's um, so cool. Yeah, I just like uh, it's a it's a little bit of everything. Like I said, it's really simmered down. I'm really like happy with what I have. I like to window shop on websites, but I've kind of like very rarely now am I like like I'm not just hitting purchase on everything I see. You know, I'm like picking, <laughs> I'm picking very carefully. <laughs> Oh yeah, same here. Like for me, like yeah. I used to collect a lot of the figures, but now like I've been really obsessed with like plushes lately. Like oh, you can probably yeah. see like my plushes up there. Uh-huh. Um, but re- lately I would say that the one thing that I absolutely love collecting is the music. Like oh. the like vi- like is I think has is it Mondo? They've been releasing like vinyls of like yeah. different Godzilla films, the Mothra trilogy. Like I'm like obsessed i just love the music yeah that's like a whole subsection it's that's like a sub subsection that's awesome because that's what i like i like to find these little corners and it's especially if it's a corner that like the entire world isn't trying to get in on then you have a little more like okay i don't have to spend a fortune on everything because everyone's not competing for it you know (laughs) yeah yeah no i agree 100 percent. yeah so that's cool oh so i have one final question for you okay i guess like we as creators like we've we have found our voices in the fandom and like we have people who consume our content so i like i always like to ask my guests this question of uh, what advice do you have for godzilla fans who are new to the franchise or fans who are aspiring creators oh okay um for aspiring creators it's kind of like circling back to what i said before do what you want to do and love to do without expectation of its success or failure um without like without being afraid of failure without wanting the success i think this is like an ellen moore quote that like stuck with me a long time ago but like these are the actions that are like the most purest actions you'll make and if you do it that way if if it doesn't get the results you want maybe you're just happy enough and you still do it or maybe you're not so crushed you try something else and if it does take off it's a really nice surprise (laughs) but i would just say like this is all to say like lean into what you love without being driven by the want of success or the fear of failure and just you know make it pure make it about the love and see what happens um oh that gave me goosebumps yeah (laughs) i love that Uh, yeah and in terms of like what's the other part of people that are new to godzilla yeah people Um, are new to godzilla i would say like i would say that there's a lot of movies and they're really fun and they're really cool in their own individual way. But try to look at it bigger than that. Try to look at like, like I keep saying the the culture as a whole and find those other pockets in like the manga or, or the American comics or the games or the video games or, or just like find the other things because there might be something else outside of the movies that you really like, like in my case, Godzilla and or or the really bizarre manga where Godzilla is like a He-Man character. Just just, 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 <laughs> just like look like love the movies and no hate to the movies, but just think try to think bigger and you might find something that really speaks to you. Ooh, I love that. I absolutely love that. So my friend. <laughs> I like obviously I want to give you an opportunity to share some plugs like where can people find your stuff I do have a couple of socials below the YouTube is one word not three words by the way when it, whenever you search it on YouTube my friends but like plugs any other plugs yeah um 
yeah, the Monster Island Buddies on YouTube is where all my content is going, um, including shows about toys and comics and video games, but also like the, the little skit show I've been doing for over a decade now is still going. I actually was filming an episode today. Um, um, so go there. But if you want to see like other stuff, like I do toy photography, that's on Instagram. I like to scan almost everything I get that's flat that I can scan, and I post that on Twitter or Tumblr. Um, it's, it kind of depends on what you want. I do different things in different places. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I just want to throw, like I, I like sharing, like everything I get, if there's a way I can show it to everyone else, I, that, I really like to do that. So follow me anywhere to see stuff. It's been such an honor to have this conversation with you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of that. course. No, I appreciate it too. Like, really, I'll come back anytime you ever want because this was, because uh, I, I don't do a lot of stuff. Like, I don't do a lot of podcasts or, or things like that. And like, um, it's not because I'm choosy. I just don't get invited. <laughs> I was like, Which really. baffles me. Honored. It baffles me. <laughs> I was like, really honored to be invited onto yours because like, because like I said, like, I, I love what you do. Um, a lot of respect for it. I want you to keep it up. And uh, I love collabing with you. Oh, well, I look forward to more collaborations in the future. I think yeah, it'll be for sure. wonderful. It'll be wonderful. Well, my friends, um, thank you as always for watching. Remember, Growing Up With Godzilla premieres on the first and third Sunday every month at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, tune in for the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.